Bueno, vamos a comenzar. Let's begin our program. Uh, my name is Raúl Raimundo. I'm the CEO of the Resurrection Project, director ejecutivo del proyecto Resurrección. Y antes de comenzar, vamos a escuchar a uh, una oración del pastor del buen del, del párroco del buen pastor, el, el padre José María, o más afeccionado conocido como el padre Chema. Uh, the pastor, Good Shepherd, is going to lead us in an opening prayer. Uh, padre Chema is, is known more in the neighborhood. Padre Chema. Loving God, our hearts are full of joy and gratitude this morning, and we bless you for all the great things that you have done for us. We bless you for all the men and women who are committed to help those who are in need. And we pray for all our community leaders who are among us today. Inspire always our minds, our hearts, and give us the wisdom to do what is right and just. Pedimos por todas las familias de la Villita que buscan vivienda y por quienes lo han perdido todo. Te damos gracias por aquellos que tienen un hogar seguro y te pedimos nos concedas vivir unidos y nos libres de todo aquello que nos pueda dañar o dividir. Que nunca olvidemos que hemos sido creados para hacer el bien y que con tu ayuda grandes cosas podemos lograr. Que tu presencia reine en nuestra comunidad, en nuestras familias y en nuestro corazón. Amén. Gracias, Padre Chema. Thank you, Father Chema. This is a really great celebration, and why are we here? ¿Por qué estamos aquí? ¿Y qué estamos celebrando? Muchos de ustedes en la comunidad saben que el Banco Second Federal ha tenido una gran herencia, gran trayectoria asistiendo a la comunidad por más de 100 años a la comunidad inmigrante. Primero a la comunidad polaca, europea, y en los últimos 50 años a la comunidad mexicoamericana. This institution has been serving the community for over a hundred years, primarily immigrants, uh, the first Eastern Europeans, and for the last 50 years, Mexican immigrants. So it's a very important institution in the community, and we did not want to see it uh, close. And this is why our organization, the Resurrection Project, who has been around for over 20 years, serving this community, Pilsen, and other communities around us, we were founded by several parishes, our mission is to build a healthy community. And to have a healthy community, we have to have healthy housing stock, a healthy economy, and institutions like Second Federal to continue to exist. Nuestra misión como Resurrección, Proyecto Resurrección, es de crear comunidades saludables para que pueda la comunidad prosperar. Necesitamos vivienda accesible, necesitamos una buena economía y instituciones que puedan dar servicio financiero a la comunidad. About a year ago, this institution um, was, was being auctioned by the FDIC, and the risk here was that there were 1,100 families. Había más de 100 familias que tienen préstamo con este banco que estaban en riesgo de ser sus hogares clausurados. These families were risked for closure, and they would not want to see this happen. And that's why our involvement was very instrumental but not only our involvement, because this does not happen with one entity doing this work. There's many partners helped us to do this work. Among them are Self-Help, who we join efforts because of their common mission with us in helping to restore and revitalize communities. La Organización de Self-Help tiene una misión muy parecida a la nuestra resurrección para crear comunidades saludables. También necesitamos el apoyo de instituciones privadas y públicas. Our help was also important to get help from public and private institutions. Our other partner, Wintrust, was instrumental in helping us make sure that we went through forward with this initiative and eventually to become what it is today. Our public partners, our elected officials locally here, um, Commissioner Jesus Garcia, Alderman Munoz, our governor, our state attorney general, who we'll hear from in a minute, and also not present with us, 
uh, who we uh, assisted us at the federal level are Senator Durbin and Congressman Gutierrez. Again, these efforts do not happen by themselves. It really requires a true partnership at all levels, community, private, public partnerships to make these things happen. Se necesita apoyo de una asociación grande, público, privado, comunidad, para que estos esfuerzos continúen. El reto era de prevenir destabilización en nuestra comunidad, crear comunidades sanas y saludables y asegurarnos de que instituciones como estas continúen ser parte de una economía local y una economía nacional. Again, this institution is now preventing destabilization in the community, creating safe communities, and ensuring that local community financial institutions continue to thrive. They are very important to part of local economies and the national economy. Uh, there are many other financial institutions out there, but we believe that community financial institutions, credit unions, to be specific like this one is now, to the, are important to the local economy and to the national economy, and they need to continue to, uh, to, to prosper. I'm going to introduce our partner here, Randy Chambers, who is the CFO from Self-Help, to talk about the partnership and also why they decided to choose to come to Chicago and work with the Resurrection Project. Uh, Randy? Thank you, Raul. Um, I want to thank particularly the Resurrection Project. Um, I've had a number of people ask me over the last 12 months as I've been flying back and forth to Chicago why self-help came to Chicago. And I think there are really two reasons. First is that this is an incredible community uh, that you can't appreciate until you come here. And I think second is we had this really incredible partner that shared our mission of promoting economic opportunity for all, um, regardless of what community you came from. Um, and that's a little bit who self-help is. The other question I get from what people when I land in Chicago is who is self-help? And so self-help is a, a community development financial institution that has served communities of color in North Carolina, California, Chicago, and really across the country for the last 33 years. Um, and we have a single purpose, which is to promote and protect ownership and economic opportunity for all. And that includes immigrant families, regardless of your status or how you came here. Um, about 15 years ago, North Carolina experienced what Chicago experienced 45 years ago, which was a large wave of immigrants uh, coming from Mexico and the rest of Latin America. And we saw the kinds of challenges that you have in those communities. And so we committed ourselves then and there that we would include immigrants in the communities that we've served. And over the last uh, 15 years have originated over 2,000 mortgages to help uh, predominantly Mexican-American immigrants uh, become homeowners for the first time. And so for us, that was sort of the touchstone that brought us together, was an opportunity to expand that here in Chicago uh, in partnership with a second organization like the Resurrection Project. And then the other thing that draws us here is actually, for me, is on that mural, which you can't really see because it's blocked by the bounce house and the trees. But if you look at that mural, you'll see a lot of heroes of the Mexican and Mexican-American movement in this country, from Father Hidalgo, the father of the independence movement in Mexico, but I want to point out two features. And take, take a second to look at that mural on the side of a bank building in the middle of a community um, here when you get a chance. One of them is the uh, a poster for the International Ladies Garment Workers Union. Chicago is such an extraordinary factory community where people labor day and night to support their families. And I think about how that connects to self-help is that in our very early days, we actually were primarily supporting workers in textile mills in North Carolina who were sewing socks and making hoes, uh, people building furniture. So that has a real resonance for us. The other resonance has for us is that um, when we launched Self-Help Federal Credit Union, which is actually the youngest member of the Self-Help family, one of the first credit unions we merged with was called Food Processors Credit Union in California. And this is a credit union uh, in the Central Valley of California, where most of us get our food from, though I think most of it now actually gets shipped through Chicago, from what I can tell from all the trucks running around here. Um, and that credit union was created by Mexican Americans and field workers who were then had moved into canneries and were putting the fruit and the vegetables into cans for the rest of us to eat. And so they started a credit union to provide their own economic opportunity for that community. So for me, that first touchstone is the uh, ILGW sign out there. The second is the picture of Cesar Chavez. Um, and uh, I had the pleasure about three years ago of having dinner with Dolores Huerta, who was Cesar Chavez's right-hand woman throughout the, um, 
battle to form the United Farm Workers in the 1960s and 1970s. And the reason I had dinner with her is because we had had an extraordinary event happen, which we has merged in a credit union in California. In Kern County, if you know the Central Valley of California, it kind of ends in Bakersfield. And in Kern County, in the early 1960s, Cesar Chavez, his wife Helen, and Dolores Huerta, before they had even organized a union, the first thing they organized was a farm worker credit union, the first farm worker credit union in the United States of America. And Dolores Huerta told me that night, she said that they actually believed that that was the most important thing they had ever achieved. So we all think of them for their achievements in organizing farm workers. I, mean, I remember as a kid not being able to eat grapes in my household because my parents wouldn't do it um, until the rights of farm workers had been recognized who were picking those grapes. But think about that. For Cesar Chavez, the most important thing for him was organizing a credit union in the early 1960s. And I think it was about controlling their economic destiny. And so for me, there's a real resonance here that this institution celebrates Cesar Chavez and is about serving the economic destiny of immigrant communities here in Chicago. Um, and so that later on, that farm worker credit union merged into a small credit union in Bakersfield. Um, and that credit union merged into self-help about four years ago, three years ago. Um, and so the other thing that was interesting is that Mrs. Chavez, Helen Chavez, actually ran that credit union for 30 years until it merged in 1994. So I think we, at least at self-help, I know we feel a, a really extraordinary obligation to celebrate that legacy, the legacy of what folks have done, you know, not just the Cesar Chavez as the folks who are on the headlines, but the little folks on the street who every day are fighting to keep their families in their homes, uh, fighting to make sure that they've got income in their pockets. And so when I came here, uh, and our staff came here over the summer last year, we all were struck by that commitment that this little bank in Little Village was really a big institution in this community and was really committed to fighting for immigrant communities. So that's why we're excited to be here in Chicago and that's why we're committed to expand, expanding that partnership, um, whether it's through home mortgages, uh, loans to dreamers, which we'll hear about in a few minutes. Uh, we've talked about doing citizenship lending, which we'll be doing by the end of the year. And I think the other thing about self-help that is really unique uh, we actually had our board of directors come to us about four months ago and they said we'd like to go on record as a financial institution that has taken a formal resolution in support of a fair comprehensive immigration reform. I don't know a lot of boards of directors of banks and credit unions across the country who raise their hand and say we want to stand with immigrants formally and ask our staff to allocate resources to supporting a fair and comprehensive immigration reform. Um, so I think that's that for us is the legacy and where we're heading. Um, uh, and so the last part of that is, is we want to continue to work with the Resurrection Project, with the staff here at Second Federal, with all of you to think about how can we leverage that commitment and that experience and your commitment and experience to actually make an impact. You know, if comprehensive immigration reform passes or when it passes, it's going to be an extraordinary opportunity for folks, but it's also going to be a large financial burden. And so we're already talking about what sort of products can we put together to make sure that people can start saving today for that day when they are able to apply for uh, residency, or if they need to borrow from us, what we can do to help. So that's where we hope that you'll see us going over the next couple of years. The other thing that's really, really important is the people who are already served by this institution. Just like self-help had helped 2,000 immigrant homeowners over the last 12 to 15 years become homeowners, this institution helped, of course, thousands over the past 130 years. But when we came in, we had about 1,100 homeowners. And because the economy here had been so hard hit, 20% of those folks were unable to pay their mortgage. And so when a l person loses their home, it's not just a loss opportunity for that family, but it's a lost opportunity for their neighbor, for their community, and so we're very deeply committed to making sure that we limit the foreclosures here in Chicago and have been partnering with the Resurrection Project, who has, of course, much deeper ties than we do, and with the staff of Second Federal, who've been quite phenomenal, to make sure we reach out to borrowers and find a way to work with them to keep them in their homes. And with support from the Resurrection Project from the state of Illinois through the Illinois Housing Development Authority, we have actually helped a rough, modified about 100 loans already to date and have helped about 170 homeowners who are in various conditions. I think it's, it's worth celebrating, but we have miles to go before we sleep. Um, and we will continue to stay on this road. So that's a little bit about why we're here. And we're just very honored to have you all here today. And thank you for supporting this. Um, it's been a tough year. 
but it's going to be exciting to come, and we're going to need all your help going forward. Thank you. Gracias, Randy. Dos o tres puntos que quiero traducir que Randy dijo. Um, esta organización, SAFA, va a estar trabajando como en comunidades como La Villita, en California, también en instituciones um, donde César Chávez hizo el movimiento y también hicieron un Credit Union ayer y esta organización ha estado apoyando eso. En los últimos meses, esta institución ya ha ayudado a más de 100 familias a restaurar sus préstamos para que las familias se queden en su casa. Y vamos a producir productos que otras instituciones no ponen, por ejemplo, préstamos quizás para aquellas personas que una vez que pase reforma migratoria puedan integrarse económicamente y préstamos para poder solicitar uh, uh, legalización. Y esta organización ya, se, ya estuvo en récord apoyando la reforma migratoria. So este, para continuar los productos para la inmigrante, las comunidades migrantes como esta. Um, I do want to acknowledge uh, Randy here is the CFO of Self Help. He's been instrumental in making this sure that everything here has moved forward. But I, I also want to acknowledge Self Help CEO who is with us today. If you could stand up, Marniques. Uh, Martin has been the visionary behind Self Help since the beginning and making sure that Self Help grows in other parts of the country as it's doing here in Chicago. Thank you, Martin, for your partnership with us. Y ahora vamos a escuchar qué es lo que ha hecho esta institución de una familia. La familia Sarco uh, nos va a dar un testimonio de cómo se ha beneficiado desde que se transformó Second Federal a un credit union Second Federal. We're going to hear now from one of the families who's benefited from the efforts that, ha that have uh, occurred since uh, self-help uh, has become a credit union, La Familia Sarco. With us this morning is Senadia Sarco. Uh, con nosotros, la señora Senadia Sarco. Buenos días. Mi nombre es Senaida Sarco y hace un año perdí mi trabajo y mi esposo estuvo enfermo. Tuvo que dejar de trabajar y un sinnúmero de pagos pendientes por hacer y nos encontrábamos en una terrible depresión. Debido a las circunstancias mencionadas, nuestro pago de casa no estaba siendo a tiempo. El Banco Second Federal Credit Union me habló del programa The Hardest Hit of Illinois y me dijo que yo podía calificar. También me habló acerca de la organización Resurrección en Pilsen. Alicia Gutiérrez me dio la información del programa y me dijo que este programa era para aquellas personas que perdieron su trabajo y no podían hacer sus pagos de casa a tiempo. El proceso fue rápido y en tres semanas Alicia me llamó para informarme que fuimos a creadores a la cantidad de 35 mil dólares. Gracias. Gracias a Dios, ahora seguimos en nuestra casa y con los pagos al corriente. Gracias especiales al gobernador Pat Quinn por asegurar que familias en el estado de Illinois tienen acceso al programa The Hardest Fit Fund y el attorney General Lisa Medigan por apoyar a familias en juicio hipotecario. Y doy también infinitamente las gracias a Second, a Second Federal Credit Union y a la a organización Resurrección y a Alicia Gutiérrez por su ayuda en este proceso tan difícil de la familia Sarco. Muchas gracias. Ms. Sarco mentioned that about a year ago, her husband lost her job and weren't able to make payments, and as a result of that, the whole household suffered from depression. But as a result of coming here um, after um, was contacted by Second Federal staff and put them in contact with Re Resurrection Project, they were able to introduce them to a program called Hardest Hits Fund. And as a result of that program, they've been able to be assisted to the tune of $35,000 and now, more importantly, to be able to live, live and stay in their home. So thank you, uh, Senora Sarco, for su testimony. 
one of the reasons the credit unions exist is because they do things that many other financial institutions cannot do. One of the reasons por qué uniones de crédito existen es porque son hacen cosas que otras instituciones no pueden hacer. Y recientemente esta organización lanzó un producto para ayudar a jóvenes para que puedan legalizarse temporalmente. Um, one of the products that it recently launched was a Dreamer loan to help young people who are applying temporarily for legal status to obtain a loan so they could pay for the application fee. We have with us a couple of students that have benefited from becoming DACA students. Uh, a couple of the students that actually have received the loan were not able to join us today, but they want to share a story about the importance of the DACA program. With us is Nayeli Silva. Nayeli? Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Um, my name is Nayeli Silva. And I'm a sophomore at the Illinois Institute of Technology, and I'm studying business administration. But before I even know, knew what I wanted to be, I knew that I wanted to go to college. And I strive for the best grades. I did all the necessary research so that I could go to the best possible college. But like most students that are undocumented and are researching post-secondary education, there were good days and there were bad days. There were days when I found out about private schools and how they gave um, they awarded um, money to students regardless of status, and there were days that I found out about FAFSA, FAFSA and how I was ineligible for FAFSA. There were days when I found out about scholarships for undocumented students, and there were days when I found out about subsidized and unsubsidized loans and how that worked and that I was ineligible to apply for those loans. But, um, one second, sorry. Um, but I took the good with the bad, um, and I focused my attention on opportunities that I had as an undocumented student, rather than the slight setbacks. And um, one amazing opportunity that is now available for undocumented students is deferred action. And uh, today I am a second year business student living on campus in my Office Sigma Alpha home. I'm an executive officer on the Undocumented Dreamers and Allies organization, and I'm living all my dreams. And that has all been possible thanks to the opportunities that came into my life like deferred action. But due to, the, um, due to the fact that outside of the scholarships that I received, I still have to fund almost $10,000 for my education every year, just with my family and myself. It is necessary to have deferred action to be able to work legally in this country. And so it's a blessing to be able to not have to worry about how I'm gonna get a job. And you know, if I'm gonna be eligible, if I'm gonna have to worry about not being able to work because I don't have a social security number. And this is what deferred action does for students. It's that peace of mind that you can work any job that you have the skills for without having to worry about, I'm, I'm not legally able to apply for this job. And so this loan that Fe Second Federal and the Resurrection Project have teamed up to be able to offer to students who don't have family and don't have the resources to apply for this loan is a blessing and they will now be able to not have to worry about the fact that they can't pay for even the opportunity to have a job in this country. So thank you so much and I'm really grateful that this is now available. Gracias Nayeli. Hasta hoy casi 40 préstamos a, a personas que han aplicado para acción deferida para poder solicitar su legación se han hecho aquí en Second Federal. As of today, almost 40 DACA Dreamer loans have been made by uh, Second Federal to make, uh, as Nayeli mentioned, um, an opportunity. Some people have not even had not even been able to apply. So we want to take that equation out of the picture and have them apply. And if resources are an issue, this product is going to help them um, to do that. Um, so thank you, Nayeli. Now let me introduce and acknowledge, again, um, our partners, because, again, I, I, I can't emphasize enough, these kinds of efforts cannot be done um, without uh, the support of everyone. Um, and we were able in, to secure a new leader for Second Federal. Um, and his, uh, he's been working here in the community, has been, knows the community very well. And as we look to who would be the next leader for leading uh, Second Federal, uh, we um, were able to hire uh, Rudy Medina, who has been with the bank for several years and is now leading the charge
to lead Second Federal Credit Union, not just here in Little Village, but also the other locations in, in uh, Brighton Park and Cicero. Uh, Rudy's going to tell us a little bit about what, we're, what to expect as we move forward with Second Federal. Rudy? Buenos dias y bienvenidos al nuevo Second Federal Savings. Uh, uso la palabra nuevo, uh, el nuevo Second Federal. Y muchos de ustedes pueden decir, pero si es el mismo edificio que tiene aquí más de 100 años. ¿verdad? Y sí lo es. Y es la misma gente trabajándolo. Pero es nuevo porque ahora empezamos con productos nuevos para la comunidad. Empezamos a ver cómo podemos ver cómo apoyar la comunidad y crecer junto con la comunidad. Second Federal Savings ha sido una organización que desde sus raíces ha crecido junto con la comunidad. Cuando la comunidad eh, pasa por problemas, también la institución pasa por problemas. Entonces, nuestra nueva meta ahorita es ver qué productos podemos, qué podemos presentar, qué productos van a apoyar y van a ayudar que, que, que tanto a la comunidad que, sirve, que servimos como a la institución salgan para adelante. Actualmente tenemos préstamos hipotecarios que están hechos específicamente para ayudar a la comunidad, ayudar a la gente más necesitada de la comunidad. Tenemos préstamos que vienen próximamente para autos, que no es cualquier otro préstamo, es un préstamo que está diseñado para ayudar específicamente a la gente que lo necesita, ¿verdad? Acabamos de oír de la gente que, que recibió su, su seguro por mediante el plan de Dreamer y, y les pido a ustedes que, que ustedes califiquen o si sus hijos califican, por favor visítenos para ver cómo les podemos ayudar con ese papeleo y ayudarles a alcanzar ese sueño. For those who don't speak Spanish, I will give the uh, Cliff Notes version. Um, we use the word, the new second federal, and, and it's the same building who's, that's been here for 120 years, the same institution, the same people working here, but it's a new day for us. It's, it's a new way of thinking, uh, a new product rollout that's, that's specific to help the community. Uh, our mortgage loans, were, which were introduced recently, are specific to help the people in the community that have the need for it. Shortly, we're going to roll out auto lending, something that, that a product that's going, to be, that's going to help the community in need. We just heard from people who got their social security number through the Dreamer program. For those parents who qualify, or for those who have children that qualify, come visit us. Let us help you get that dream done. Um, thank you everyone for coming out. Rudy has over 15 years of experience in the banking industry, but more importantly, he understands and knows the community. Rudy tiene más de 15 años en experiencia en las áreas de bancaria, pero más importante, conoce la comunidad, entiende qué productos hacen falta y por eso uh, estamos orgullosos de tenerlo como el nuevo presidente de Second Federal. We're proud and, and, uh, and, and, and grateful that we have him as our president of Second Federal because he understands the community uh, as uh, very, very in depth uh, as well. And as he mentioned, one of the new products they were looking to launch is uh, auto loans, and that's very important because, you know, uh, the governor, Attorney General Madigan, uh, many of the other elected officials here were also very supportive of uh, driver's license for all, and that's coming up in the, in, uh, at the end of this year, um, where many individuals are going to be able to apply for licenses so that we can have safe roads, and there's going to be, we believe, an increase in demand for auto loans, and we're going to be providing them and serving them correctly. Uh, como saben, las licencias de, 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 de manejar se han pasado para, para todos, no importa si es migratoria, y va a haber interés en préstamos de carros si queremos prepararnos para eso. Um, and that's, the, the, the governor has been leading the charge, not just on driver's license and other issues. Um, the governor of Illinois has been a true champion of consumers, dating back to his days as treasurer. And we're very happy to have him as a partner, particularly the initiatives through the state of Illinois and Ida. El Gobernador Quinn ha sido un campeón para el consumidor 
no nomás como gobernador, pero también desde sus años cuando era el tesorero del Estado. Y estamos orgullosos de tenerlo esta mañana apoyando los esfuerzos. We're very excited to have Governor Quinn here with us with, uh, this morning. Governor Quinn. Um, Governor, I want to present you with these balloons um, that are a symbol of new dreams in the community. And I'd like to lift them <laughs> and let them go as a symbol of new dreams rising for the community. All right, well done. <laughs> Can't go wrong with the mariachi. We well, can't go wrong with mariachis and the balloons, and uh, it's such an honor to be here today. I want to thank everyone who is in attendance and will be coming by. As was mentioned by Raul, I used to be the state treasurer of Illinois, and you can't have capitalism without capital. And it's so important that we have financial institutions that are lending in the community. The word credit means to believe in Latin, and we have to believe in every community in our state and to have a federal credit union here uh, together with the uh, great efforts of Wind Trust. I want to thank Dennis Jones, my good friend with Wind Trust and the Resurrection Project that were part of this uh, partnership. Uh, we heard from Randy about the movement across our country for federally, uh, federal community development credit unions. It's so important that we use the power of organizing to help people in the neighborhood in the community, and that's why I'm here today, and I know Lisa Madigan, our Attorney General, who has fought so hard against the abuses that occurred, especially five years ago, uh, that caused so much havoc in our economy across America, where people were losing their jobs and their homes. We're not gonna let that happen. And as Raul mentioned, we have the hardest hit fund that is set up by law uh, with our state of Illinois to provide financial assistance to families to provide to protect them from foreclosure. And I want to thank uh, Zanita uh, for being here today and for participating in that program. There's still time to apply. We've been able to help thousands of homeowners working with institutions like the credit union we're talking about today to protect people in their homes and then to help folks get a home, get a mortgage, be able to be a homeowner. And we just saw how important it is for education uh, that we have the DREAM Act in Illinois, where we do provide scholarships to students who are undocumented, who have the ability to go to college, who want to go to college, and we have uh, a program of scholarships, but oftentimes you need a loan as well in order to go to college. And it's very important that we work together on that. I saw in the uh, briefing notes that they're going to be dreamer loans for applying for the uh, visa application. I think it's $465. Uh, that is so important to have credit flowing through the community. And that's something that uh, Alderman Rick Munoz, who is uh, on my right, and Jesus Garcia, Chuy Garcia, Commissioner Garcia, have been fighting for in this community as long as I have known them. It is important that we make sure that credit is available for buying a home, for getting a car loan, for sending your kids to college, for applying for a visa. All of these things requ require credit, and that's why we have to have a strong credit institution. And I uh, was very moved by the, uh, m uh, the mural, mural over uh, away, just over down, down the road there. Uh, Father Miguel Hildago 
as folks know, in 1810, in Mexico, he uh, had the El Grito, the cry uh, for independence for the people of Mexico. And we just celebrated that this past week. And if Father Hildago was here today, I know he would thank Father Chuck Dom and Father uh, Don Nevins and all of the other priests who are with us who understand how important it is that our faith and animate our community efforts to help our neighbor. Father uh, Hildago lost his life in fighting for the independence of Mexico. And I think it's important that we uh, remember his life and also remember the purposeful life of Cesar Chavez. I met Cesar Chavez in Chicago, not far from here, in 1974. I got to shake his hand. And everyone knows his famous saying of Si Si Puede, but that day I talked to him, he not only said Si Si Puede, he said, Untos Podemos, together we can. And that's what we have to do in Illinois, work together for the common good. And that's what credit unions are all about. It's so important that we band together. My father helped start a credit union at his work years ago. I'm a member of three credit unions. I don't know whether I can join the credit union here, but if, if I can, I will. And we'll try and deposit some of our campaign money here as well, if that's possible. You got to invest in things you believe in. And I believe in credit unions and I believe in everyday people. And uh, I think it's so important that we have this opportunity to come together to celebrate with the mariachis. I had the honor of going to Mexico earlier this year. I was in Mexico City. And it's important that we band together our two countries for the common good to make the will of people the law of the land. Thank you very much. Como ven, han escuchado la pasión del gobernador. En breve se ha comprometido a continuar trabajando para que esfuerzos como este, uniones de crédito, sigan mejorando la economía local. Hay programas en el nivel estatal que todavía hay oportunidad para que familias puedan prevenir sus hogares, que se desaparezcan y continuar estos programas. Y él está muy orgulloso de participar con nosotros. Um, with us now is Attorney General Lisa Madigan. Lisa has not just been a champion here in Illinois in making sure that predatory lenders are out of business, uh, but she's been a true nation, national champion in making sure that the right foreclosure settlements are addressed uh, and that families have reprieved from a lot of abuses that took place during this recession. So we couldn't get a better champion who's day in, day out is fighting con for consumers and making sure that the wrong financial institutions are held accountable to who often prey on communities like Little Village and immigrant communities. And again, she's been a champion, not just here in the state of Illinois, but also at the national level. Attorney General Madigan, Lisa. We take these balloons and release them as a symbol of new hopes rising in our community. <laughs> Buenos dias. Good morning. I am so excited to be able to come out to the community this morning and be part of this very important celebration. As Raul was just mentioning, we have gone through a very, very difficult decade uh, in our nation's history. And it is a history of predatory lending and financial abuse that was really directed at some communities in particular that had the least ability to contend with it. So when we look at the predatory lending and really where it took place, we see that the Latino community was among the hardest hit and possibly the hardest hit in our country. So between 2007 and 2010, 40% of the wealth in the Latino community was wiped out through predatory lending really being at the heart of it. And so when we look back on the economic crisis, the recession that took place in our country, it is the Latino community that has truly borne the brunt of it. And so that is why coming together today is so important to celebrate our commitment to the future, 
to ensure that we are putting in place programs that are going to ensure the financial stability, the financial success, and really the financial security of homeowners, of dreamers, of immigrants, so that we no longer see foreclosures devastating families, devastating neighborhoods, devastating our community, devastating our nation. Instead, we see rebuilding. We see people investing in the community. We see them staying in the community and growing roots in our community, raising families in our community who are going to be strong, are going to be able to get an education, and are going to be the second, third, and fourth generation here in our communities. And so I am very proud of the fact that the Resurrection Project has really spearheaded this initiative and has found such open and willing partners with Trust and with self-help. Because I have to say, when Raul first came to my office and said, this is what we are trying to do, we are trying to acquire the deposits of Wind Trust, I looked at him a little skeptically, because I didn't think that this was necessarily a commitment uh, that a bank was willing to take on. But through his powers of persuasion, and because what he is trying to do is right, and because he had the right partner in self-help, I am so thrilled that Wind Trust was able to come together and to recognize that this was a community who was going to invest in their future and that it was critical that Wintrust made that possible. So I give an enormous amount of credit to Raul and to everybody with the Resurrection Project and with Self Help and with Wintrust for making this happen. It is an incredible and unique, very unique situation across the entire country. So as Raul mentioned, uh, as your Attorney General, I have had the unfortunate uh, ability, but the important job of assuring that those who created this financial catastrophe for millions of people across our country are held responsible. And in particular, one of the most important cases that we took on was showing that here in the Chicago community, people in the Latino community and in the African American community, even though their credit should have allowed them to get a prime rate loan, so a lower interest loan, they were put into subprime loans, higher interest rate loans with toxic features, so the adjustable rate mortgages, the prepayment penalties. We were able to document the fact that those loans were mainly targeted at Latinos and at the African American community. We brought lawsuits against the two largest lenders in the Latino and African American communities, Bank of America, because they had taken over Countrywide and Wells Fargo. And after we brought those lawsuits, we went to the United States Department of Justice and we said, this didn't just happen here in the city of Chicago. This happened across the country. And through work with our now Secretary of Labor, but then head of the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice, Tom Perez, they dedicated resources to doing these investigations across the country and were able to show that, in fact, this had taken place. This discriminatory, predatory lending was taking a place across the country. We were able to settle both of those cases against Countrywide and Wells Fargo for over half a billion dollars. We got money back to people in the communities here in Chicago and across the nation, but that money was never going to be able to really change what had already happened. And so while we're proud of that, we have continued to go after not just the abuses that took place on the front end of the mortgage lending, but the abuses that continue to take place on the back end, on the servicing end, when struggling families are trying to get help from their financial institutions. And so the largest settlement that we've been involved with is the $25 billion national foreclosure settlement that we announced last February, not this February, but February of last year. That is scheduled to bring in well over at the time it was only a billion dollars to the state of Illinois. So far we're almost at two billion dollars to the state of Illinois and as part of those proceeds we are very pleased that we have been able to contribute two million dollars to the Resurrection Project to continue to do the good work that we've been talking about here today to ensure that there is redevelopment of blighted homes, to create a mortgage loan fund for families who are unable to secure 
mortgages through the traditional banking system, but will be able to do it with the help of Second Federal, as well as providing very necessary pre-purchase counseling, housing counseling to pe people to ensure that we have well-prepared home buyers. And so I am so proud that as your Attorney General, I can come together with you today and celebrate our accomplishments, because truly, this is a resurrection. This is a rebirth in a community that has had so many struggles, and we want to make sure that the future is bright. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for your hard work. En breve, la fiscal de esta, del estado de Illinois habló acerca de que durante la recesión y con muchas instituciones financieras que se aprovecharon de la comunidad, en realidad la comunidad hispana sufrió una riqueza una caída de riqueza del más del 40%, muchas familias ahorita tienen préstamos, pero su valor de su casa es mucho más bajo que el valor de su préstamo, por muchas cosas que se hicieron uh, donde se aprovecharon de, de las familias. Y ella trabajó fuerte para demandar a esas instituciones y en hacer es, esa demanda pudo recaudar fondos para poder reinvertir en comunidades, no nomás en el Estado de Illinois, pero en la nación. Y aquí en, uh, en, en el Estado de Illinois se ha recaudado más de un billón de dólares uh, para poder reinvertir en comunidades. El Preto de Resurrección y el Banco Second Fero han recibido dos millones de dólares para poder reinvertir en productos que van a beneficiar a la comunidad. So, estamos orgullosos de nuestra asociación con uh, la fiscal del Estado, uh, Lisa Merrigan. Y ahora con nosotros tenemos, uh, with us is also now a board member of the National Credit Union, uh, Mr. Michael Frizzell. He is he has been very instrumental also. When I, I'm told that when he was approached about this uh, project, there was a lot of questions uh, that were surfaced about why this credit union should exist in, 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 in Chicago in a place like this. But I think we've become, um, we've made him a believer of this initiative. So I want to ask him to say a few remarks. Michael Frizzell. Good morning, everyone. I am really honored, and it is a tremendous pleasure to be with you for this great event. Uh, we have beautiful weather today. We've been blessed with that, thanks to the prayers of Father last night. It is an important date because you have here two of the highest elected officials in the state of Illinois, Governor Quinn and Attorney General Madigan, who felt that this was important enough with their busy schedules to attend this event and to show the support for the Little Village community. And it is a special day. It is a special day for the people of Little Village because they now have a financial institution that is going to be here for their needs. Across this city, across this state, across this country, financial institutions have gone by the way. They have closed and they have left their communities. We're not here in Little Village because of the work of a lot of people. And it's special because all these people came together because they realized what needed to be done. The Resurrection Project, Self-Help Credit Union, Wintrust Hinsdale Bank, your elected officials from the city and the county, the alderman, the commissioner, our director of the Department of Financial Institutions, Francesco, who is here today, the FDIC and the National Credit Union Administration all worked together to make sure that this was gonna happen, that this was gonna be successful, and that the little village was gonna have a financial institution that was gonna serve their needs for years to come. The credit union philosophy, the credit union movement, for years has said their mission is people helping people. And those words could not be truer than they are today with all the people that have come together to make sure that the people who live and work in the little village will, will be able to prosper and to move forward with their futures as with the young lady who spoke and what she's gonna do with her future. 20, 30 years from now, those are the people who are gonna be introduced as our governor and our attorney general of this state. And that is because of the efforts of Second Federal and the credit unions who have come together to make sure that happens. Thank you very much. My pleasure being here. En breve, él habló acerca de la misión de cooperativas financieras como Second Federal, Uniones de Crédito, es gente ayudando a gente. Y 
ahora eh, dijo que ese, el, la mañana de hoy es un ejemplo de cómo la gente está ayudando a gente cuando todas las uh, asociaciones se, se enfocan en levantar una institución como esta, no nomás los ele oficiales electos, pero al nivel estatal, gubernamental, pero también las instituciones comunitarias y también uh, instituciones privadas. With us um, now is uh, Dennis Jones, who is the CEO of Hinsdale Bank, a division of Wintrust. Um, Dennis and uh, Jones and, um, and um, Wintrust have been instrumental in making this happen. Uh, initially, uh, the partnership that we created, uh, Second Federal Savings and uh, Self-Help and Resurrection Project, were able to obtain the loans portfolio to move forward and assist families. While uh, Wintrust was being the caretaker, if you will, of the deposits, they realized that the only way this institution was going to move forward strong was to make sure that the deposits, the loans, and the branches were all in one. And we're really grateful that they sat down at the table with us and continued the conversation to make this a reality, and that's what we're celebrating with us. But again, we couldn't have done this without their support. Uh, Dennis? What a difference a year makes. Um, buenos dias. Good morning. What an uplifting, positive, and reaffirming morning this is. My name is Dennis Jones, and I'm here today representing Wintrust Financial. Wintrust is proud to have played a vital and perhaps an unprecedented role in assuring that the communities served by Second Federal Credit Union will continue to have a neighborhood-based, highly customer-focused, financial institution taking care of its unique needs. You know, that's been the case on this corner since 1882, and it's only right that that continues. Last November, when the alliance between self-help, the Resurrection Project, and Wintrust was being forged, my boss and our CEO, Ed Waymer, commented that, quote, sometimes Wintrust may not be the perfect answer. As much as we at Wintrust believe that we still could have been very good for the Southwest side in Cicero, we were able to bury our egos when we became convinced that the self-help resurrection combination would be better than we were. As Raul just said, the community is much better served when the deposits, the loans, and the branches are unified. We're fortunate today that that vision was able to be realized through the cooperation of so many different parties and this morning, that's what we celebrate. You know, this alliance continues. The work of self-help and the work of Wintrust actually complements one another as we together uh, work to build stronger communities. Wintrust continues to serve all of its markets in Chicago. We're active community development lenders, we're small business lenders, we're residential mortgage lenders. We continue to support the Little Village community through our efforts with the Little Village Chamber of Commerce, Fiesta del Sol, and LASE, the Little Village Independence Day activities, the upcoming uh, Global Latino Fest, which this year will benefit the uh, La Casa Project, the Resurrection Project. And particularly important to me is for the last 11 years, my bank has been a work-study partner with, with uh, Cristo Rey Jesuit High School. While there's not, while there's not a Wintrust sign affixed to that bank building, our people and our funds are at work side by side with Second Federal in your community. I want to congratulate the three R's, Raul, Rudy, and Randy, in pulling this together. And thank you for giving us the opportunity for a very learning experience for Wintrust and an incredible and unique collaboration. Thank you. La institución financiera Wintrust sigue apoyando la comunidad y ha estado invirtiendo en otros programas en la comunidad y instituciones como Cristo Rey, la Cámara de Comercio de la Villita y va a seguir trabajando en estos esfuerzos, aun aunque su nombre no está en la institución, ellos tienen una presencia aquí en la comunidad. I'd like to introduce now um, one of the long-term customers of Second Federal. Mr. Mike Moreno, who's a very been very active business owner here in the community, to share a few words about this initiative. 
el señor Miguel Moreno es un comerciante que tiene años, años trabajando en esta comunidad y es un cliente de Second Ferro por años. Mike. Muy buenos días. Soy su servidor Mike Moreno. Como pequeños negocios en la villita, la familia Moreno ha superado gracias a ustedes el cliente y la parte integral de nuestra comunidad, el, el Banco Second Federal Savings. Hace 39 años, cuando nuestra familia vino a Second Federal con un sueño de abrir un pequeño negocio y cuando no le daban los préstamos a los mexicanos o mexicoamericanos, era muy difícil conseguir un préstamo. Vinimos aquí a Second Federal y ellos nos hicieron ese sueño posible. Seguimos aquí en la, en la villita y como un comercio exitoso, pero también regresamos a la comunidad como a Villarte, a Villa Palusa y a nuestra juventud que tanto lo necesita para tratar de poner un paro a la violencia que existe en nuestra comunidad, que juntos sí podemos. Estos últimos años han sido un tiempo muy difícil para nuestra comunidad, hemos perdido casas, muchos negocios se han cerrado. El banco de nosotros del pueblo fue tomado for, por FDIC, pero gracias a Self Help y a Wintrust que, que han logrado mantener esta comunidad estable con, con sus préstamos. Y gracias a la ética de trabajo que todos los mexicanos tenemos, no nos hemos vencido, hemos superado y hemos seguido adelante y nos ha nombrado la segunda milla magnífica de, de la ciudad de Chicago por recursos financieros al, al estado y a Illinois. Y todavía seguimos con esa visión y con esa mira, no dejamos de ser la segunda milla milagrosa. Sigue siendo una comunidad vibrante gracias a nuestro banco Juntos sí se puede. Una vez más la calle 26 seguirá adelante. I'm a little village resident for, for many, many years, grown and raised on 18th Street and raised on 26th Street. I've seen many changes in Little Village. I've seen a community change from very few businesses to very many businesses. One of them is Natotonilco, um, that's to my left of here. And uh, we have been very fortunate. We have been very hard working and we have given to the community and we will continue give to the community. And we're very grateful to Second Federal Savings, to Self Help, to Win Trust, And, and to all the people that work together to support us, and we will continue to be there also to, to help our community that is in so much need, especially uh, helping our youth with the violence that plagues our community. Uh, next, door next to my business, this summer we have seen three deaths near our doorsteps and we would like for that to stop by giving to our youth like Villarte, like Villa Palusa, like all our communities that give back to the community. And that's what we're all about. And I'd like to thank again Self Help and uh, Second Federal Savings. Together we can. Thank you. Gracias, Mike. Let me introduce now two local officials that have been instrumental in making sure and serving the community, not only serving the community, but the customer of the Second Federal, but also making sure that the community continues to thrive 
uh, economically, safely, and otherwise. And those are the representative of the 22nd Ward, Alderman Ricardo Munoz, and Commissioner Garcia um, of the 7th District of Cook County. Alderman's going to share a few words, and then Commissioner Garcia. Muchas gracias, Raúl. Muy buenas tardes. Sí es un buen día cuando podemos estar aquí hablando de el nuevo Second Federal. We're talking about the new Second Federal, and I want to thank uh, the governor, Governor Quinn, Attorney General Madigan. Yes, you're still, yes, there you are. Uh, Mr. Chambers, Mr. Jones, uh, and most of all, the team assembled by Raul Raimundo in the Resurrection Project. Because when Raul and his team first approached uh, myself and Commissioner Garcia uh, about what their vision was with this new Second Federal, uh, I was a bit skeptic. I said, how could we do this? This is pretty large. It's huge. It's complicated. It's banking. It's really, 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 really messy, especially in light of what happened in 2007 and 2008. But then I saw the team that Raul assembled. And Raul, congratulations. Because your team, your team with Self-Help Federal Credit Union and the local folks that helped basically talked about two things, sustainability and partnership. Partnered with the right local institutions, the right state institutions, and the right national institutions. And sustainability because, as you can see, 26th Street uh, is a neighborhood, Little Village is a neighborhood that sustains itself because it is a working class immigrant community that when we can't find work, we'll invent it. We'll create the work. And are always looking for a good banking partner that can provide those products, those services to our community. So thank you very much, Raul, for doing a great job and for everybody else that made this happen. Hay que celebrar el nuevo, el nuevo Second Federal. Gracias. Y muy buenos días, yo soy Jesús García, el comisionado del condado de Cook, de esta región, el suroeste de la ciudad de, la ciudad de Chicago y del condado de Cook. Quiero decir solamente algunas cositas porque las carnitas que trae a Totonilco ya están aquí, muy olorosas, muy sabrosas y está gruñendo un poquito la tripa, ¿no? No se puede competir contra lo que no se puede competir. Uh, Resurrection Project, los quiero felicitar por tener el valor de imaginarse otra nueva realidad. Este renacimiento que hizo mención la procuradora, es algo muy importante para esta comunidad. Quiere decir que hay una institución que ayudará a fortalecer la base económica y el bienestar de esta comunidad. Una institución que se preocupa por la educación y el futuro de nuestros niños, de nuestros nietos y nietas. Una institución que es controlada por los miembros. La Asociación de Uniones de Crédito a la cual, a cual está afiliada, Second Federal Credit Union, es la más grande y la más progresista en los Estados Unidos. Eso es un gran triunfo para La Villita, para Cicero, para la comunidad de Brighton Park, para la comunidad en general. Finalmente, quiero agradecerles por ser un líder más, esta institución, la organización Proyecto Resurrección, en la lucha para prevenir la clausura de más casas en esta región, por luchar para que haya justicia, por ganarse recursos importantes para reinvertir en esta comunidad, para que sea una comunidad más estable, que tenga mayor prosperidad para todos. ¿Qué más les puedo decir? Solamente que... Rudy, yo quiero hacer mi aplicación para ser miembro porque quiero ser un dueño más de esta unión de crédito progresista que lucha por nuestra comunidad. Felicidades y que siga la fiesta. Y ahora vamos a celebrar con la fiesta. Antes de concluir, quiero invitar al padre Charles Dam, del padre Carlos de San Pío, que es miembro de la mesa directiva del proyecto de resurrección. 
el padre Donaldo de Santa Inés está fuera de Chicago, no nos pudo acompañar esta mañana. I'm going to ask Father Chuck Dam, who is a member of the board of the Resurrection Project, to join us in giving us a, a, a final blessing as we leave. And, and don't leave after the blessing because there's plenty of food and activities for children and family so you can stay with us. Uh, Father Charles. Buenas gracias. Hace, hace 23 años tuvimos un sueño que necesitamos un banco una unión de crédito más bien que sirverá a la comunidad. Y ahora es una realidad, pero teníamos la idea hace 23 años cuando Raúl y yo fundamos el proyecto Resurrección. Y gracias a Dios podemos celebrar hoy día con mucho orgullo y mucha alegría el éxito y la realidad de este sueño. So 23 years ago, uh, when Raul and I and others were f founding the Resurrection Project, we had a dream. And part of that dream was to create a financial institution that would serve the immigrant Hispanic community. And we had that dream because we saw that the financial institutions in our communities were not serving our community. They barely had anybody who could speak Spanish. Yeah, they didn't have any materials to hand to people. There was no education of the people about checking accounts, about the value of a saving account. People were ignored and unserved. And we saw that, and we wanted to make a difference. But it's taken us a long time to realize that dream, to make it a reality. And today we celebrate that that dream has come true. It's here. It's Second Federal Credit Union. Along these years, we have seen changes. So we have seen banks that have now employed mostly in our communities, mostly Hispanic tellers. We see that they have changed in many ways, but we've also seen how they have not changed, how they've continued to take advantage of the community and not lived up to their uh, responsibilities under the Community Reinvestment Act. They have not invested in the communities. So we are still on the way to making a significant change in showing that this can be done. At the Resurrection Project, we have built homes, we have created affordable housing that's rental and for owners to buy. And we have never had any financial problems with the community because our immigrant community understands responsibility, understands financial commitment, and follows through. They pay their bills. And on that basis, we have total confidence that this credit union, Second, Second Federal, will have a brilliant future and will, will, will uh, shine like a star, as was said here, across the United States. It will show that the immigrant community can make a difference in the financial world. Now, this has only come about because of determination. This dream didn't come true easily. It's been years, and in this last year, it has required considerable effort. So we've had many obstacles, many challenges. Many said it couldn't be done. But with all these partners that you've heard about today, we've made it a reality. So thank you to all the partners who have made this happen, and especially to the leadership of Self Help and the Resurrection Project. So today we celebrate with much joy and happiness and thanks to God for the blessings we've received. So I'd like to ask you all to please stand, those who are seated, and let us turn towards Second Federal and raise our hand in form of blessing over Second Federal. Loving God, we ask your blessings upon this endeavor. We ask you to bless all those who trust in this institution and become members. Guide them on their way. We ask you to bless all the employees so that they will feel your presence and that they will inspire and animate everybody who comes through their doors that this is a welcoming and holy place where they can receive understanding and assistance. May your presence be seen in Second Federal by the love and compassion 
shown by its employees. Bless all the partners who made this happen. May they continue to work together for the good of the community. Bless us all, and this we pray in your holy name. Amen. Que viva el la unión que crédito second Pedro. Que viva. Que viva la comunidad de la villita. Que viva el pueblo inmigrante. Que viva el proyecto resurrección. Que viva la organización de self help. Que viva Second Federal Credit Union. Que viva Second Federal. Que viva.